So I've got some ESP Home devices that are pretty tricky to update because they run on batteries um, and I have them configured to deep sleep for quite a long time with very short wake intervals just to update their sensor status. For instance, if you look at my Wi-Fi moisture sensor, I actually only have that thing wake up for 10 seconds four times a day. And it's actually extremely hard to catch that thing when it's awake. And so what do you do in this situation? So in this video, I'm gonna show you two different ways potentially that you could force updates to this device as soon as it wakes up. So the first way we're gonna look at doing this is an automatic update. Now we'll point out that the way I'm gonna show you how to do an automatic update will really only work for version updates like if ESP Home updates its version, it will change the status to, hey, there's a firmware update available. Um, there's probably ways that you could change this method to make it work if you do a configuration change, but I'm not exactly sure how to do that. And so the second method, I'll show you how to deal with configuration changes that you wanna push out. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up an automation. So in Home Assistant, go to settings, then we're gonna go to automation and scenes, and then we're going to create a new automation by clicking on create automation and then create new automation. So the first thing we need to do is add a trigger. So under the add trigger, we're going to select device. So under device, type in your device name. So mine is called BME280 because this is a weather sensor that detects temperature, barometric pressure, and humidity. For the trigger, change the trigger to status connected. And so basically, as soon as your device comes on, this automation would trigger. Now we wanna add a second piece, which is a and if, because we don't just want it to run when the device connects, we want it to connect and check a condition. So we're gonna add a condition, then click entity, and then we're gonna click state. So for the entity, go through the list and find your device firmware, and then leave the attribute blank, and then go to state, and when it says update, available. So at this point, we have an automation that checks when the device connects and there's an update available for the firmware, then add an action. So in the search box, just type in update and you'll see update install update pop up and just click on it. So then we just have to set the correct target. So choose your device and I've found the BME 280 and that's it. Just save it. Now, if you want to check that the automation is working, once it's set up in here, you can see I've got it named Auto Update BME 280. Whenever you click into it, up here at the right, go to Traces. And this will actually show you a way to verify that everything's working correctly. And so you can go to Trace Timeline, and here it will show you the last time this automation was triggered. And so you can see at 10.55 and 18 seconds, this tested whether or not a firmware update was available. It failed. It says it stopped because, well, the condition failed. And over here on the left, it gives you a little tree where you can see where it tested conditions and what happened, right? Now, up at the top, you've also got arrows that you can look at some of the older times that this automation was triggered and what happened in those past automations. And so that's one way to automatically update your firmware when ESP Home has a firmware update. But at this point, I'm still not sure whether or not you can push updates whenever you change configurations using this method. So let's look at a second method where you can manually force the device to stay awake the next time it wakes up, and then you can trigger a firmware update that way. And so here's a little card I've got set up for this device. And so this is just a combination of some vertical and horizontal stacks on a custom card. Um, and so I've got the sensors reading in. More importantly, you see these four boxes down here where I've got the connection status where it says my device is connected. It's got a firmware status that it says it's up to date. And then I've got an OTA mode. And so this is actually a toggle which I can click on and off and then it's got a reset device. And if I click that and the device is connected, it will reset the device. Now, how do we set these things up? The first thing we're gonna do is set up a toggle. Now, this is before we do any configurations in the device YAML. You can have your device already set up, but we'll add the YAML to make this work a little later. But first, we, we are gonna set up this toggle um, in Home Assistant. And so this is gonna be with a helper. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go into settings and in settings, you're going to go to devices and services and then up at the top, click helpers and then create helper down at the bottom. Now in here, you're going to look for a toggle. So scroll down, select toggle, and then just name this whatever you want. So if I wanted, I could name it BME 280 OTA mode, and then you can give it an icon of whatever you want. Now, I usually pick something like one of the file icons with some arrows just to show, hey, we're pushing a file out and then create. And so now you see we just have a big toggle and this switch currently doesn't do anything because it's not connected to anything. But this is just a way to set up in Home Assistant a dummy toggle that you can hook into from the device side. So this is going to allow us to set a flag that the ESP Home device can read from. So here's my current helper that I've got set up. And so one piece of information before we go edit the YAML that we need from here, go to the little gear icon and you want to copy the entity ID name. You want to just have that saved somewhere. So this input Boolean and I've got mine BME OTA mode is what this one is called. This is the actual one that I've got previously set up. And just save this name somewhere, put it in a notepad file, something like that, because we're going to use this in our YAML code. So now let's go over to ESP Home into the YAML code for the device that we want to update. So the first couple things we need to add into our YAML for this device are a couple of binary sensors. So the first thing, I've just got a little status set up so that I can read the status of the device. And so the next one is the really important one, the platform home assistant sensor. OK, so what this is going to allow us to do is read the state of the helper that we just set up. So here, that entity ID that I told you to save this is where we need to put that into this entity ID. Now, as far as the names and the IDs, you can kind of pick whatever you want. Um, the ID is just so that we can refer to this sensor elsewhere in our YAML code. Now, I've also got my little deep sleep routine set up. I've given it an ID, and so that's just going to be the name of the deep sleep routine. I'm also going to add that button for the restart. So that little toggle that said restart, this is how you can have Home Assistant send a restart signal to your device just in case it's connected and you've got the update finished and you just want to reset it. Um, this will allow us to have a little reset button in Home Assistant. And lastly, we have the script. And so this is the script that is going to read from the toggle switch in Home Assistant. And if the toggle is on, keep our device from going back to sleep. So this is just going to keep it awake. OK, so I've got it named. So the name of the script is test underscore OTA. So this queued status is just going to run until it's executed again. Um, and so the actual script, OK, we've got it. We're going to send a log statement so that when the script runs, it notifies the log and just says, hey, we're checking to see if we need to push an OTA. And then here are the if conditions. So if the binary sensor OTA mode is on. So again, OTA mode is what we named the sensor from Home Assistant, which is just that little toggle switch. So if the toggle switch is on, then um, log that the switch is on, OTA mode is on, and prevent the sleep routine. So my sleep routine is called go to sleep in this device. And so it's just saying prevent that routine from running. Or if the condition is not on, so any other condition other than is on, then we just log, hey, the OTA mode isn't on. And so this will allow the go to sleep routine to run. And then I've just got a little delay and then it executes the script again. So basically this script will just check, is the toggle on? If it is, don't let the device go to sleep. If it's not on, just let things continue as normal and run this check basically once a second. Now, the last piece that we need to do is up at the top, just make sure that this script runs on startup. And so at the top of my YAML, I've got an on boot. And so I've got some other stuff going on here, but you can see the test OTA script runs at the beginning, right? So as soon as the device turns on, it starts checking for that flag every second. And if the flag is on, it's going to hold the device awake. And what that allows us to do is prevent the device from going back to sleep so that we can then update the firmware manually and then turn the flag back off. 
So here I am in the log and the device is on and I have the switch in Home Assistant turned on. And so you can see every second that script is printing out that it's running and then it checks and the OTA is on and this device is not going to sleep. And so now if I want to update this device, I don't have to worry about it being asleep. I can just push the update manually. Then I can turn my flag off and everything will run as normal. And so now you can use that toggle switch anywhere you want as an entity in your Home Assistant dashboard. And so you can come in here and now I've got a little toggle. And if I want the device to not go to sleep the next time it wakes up, I can just turn the OTA mode on and then I can push firmware. And so this little firmware status, you know, it will tell me whether there's an actual firmware update that needs to happen or not. And so now I've got some hooks that I can use in my Home Assistant dashboard. And so if I want to update the device manually, I can come in here to the OTA mode button, click on it. Um, you know, I've got it off. I can set it on. The next time the device connects, it will stay awake. And then I can update the firmware manually that way. And so there you go, two different ways to force updates to devices that have deep sleep set up um, in ESP Home, right? Uh, again, I find them both to be useful for different things. The manual update has the downside of if you turn it on, it's going to stay awake until you come back and manually turn it back off. That could use up more battery. Um, the auto update works potentially well for doing the firmware auto update. But the problem is, is sometimes you may not want to do that. So again, just two different methods that you can use whichever one you feel works better. And you can certainly modify these probably to do all kinds of other things. Um, I was just focused on, hey, I needed to update some devices and it was really difficult to either pull them up from outside or to catch them while they were awake. So uh, that's all for this video. If you've got any feedback or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Thanks.